Toes up for making some acrylic paint gel skin shapes. So the shape I'm using, yep, you've guessed it, it's a star. Just to show you how to do this and also share my top tips on making these. But of course, you can apply this technique to any shapes you want. So let me show you the basics and don't forget that all the supplies are listed below the video in the description, as always. Right, grab some acrylic paints and I have mostly the heavy body type of paints here. So paints that will hold their shape and aren't too fluid. I'm only going to use paints for this, not mediums or gels, but you can easily swap those in instead. And perhaps I'll cover those in another video at a later date. You're going to want a plastic sheet and I find the kind of office folder sheets work really well. You know the type that you put paper into? You want a plastic that the acrylic paint won't stick permanently to. So if you're not sure, test it out first. A palette knife is handy and you're also going to need some wire. So a good craft wire or a floral wire works. And this one is 20 gauge, which is around um, 0.8 millimeters. So you need something that will hold its own, but is still reasonably pliable too. Pliers and wire cutters are a must. And if you're using a tight wire spool like I've got here, then some sort of wire straightening tool will really help. And I'm using these nylon jaw flat nose pliers. I've only had them for about a year and it's one of those tools that I didn't realize how much I needed them until I got them. Also grab craft knife, scissors, pencil, paper, and let's go. So first up, draw yourself a template of the shape that you want to bend. This will just be a rough guide for the size and the bending pattern. And here is a really simple way to draw a star. But remember, you don't have to stick to stars. You can use any shape you want. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. So don't forget to share them with me on social media and all my links are below. So once I've done that, I'm just going to cut myself a piece of wire that's big enough to cover my shape. If you want to keep your, yours on the spool, just go ahead. I just find it a lot easier to manipulate it like this. And this tight wire spool means that I have a lot of kinks in it. So I'm just going to straighten out the wire with those nylon jaw pliers. But if your spool isn't so tight, then you probably can just skip this step. Once I'm happy with the wire, it's time to bend it into the shape that I need. And the handy template is really useful. And as I said, it is really just a guide. So make sure you keep referring back to it and adjust as you go along. As you work, try to keep the wire all on one plane. So try not to twist the bends up or down because you want the shape to lie pretty flat when you're finished and you can modify it at the end, but it's also a good idea to keep making sure that it's flat as you work through the process. It will just make it a lot easier. And once you have your shape, you want to connect those two open ends to close them up. So I tend to cut the last bit slightly longer than it needs to be so that I can twist the two ends together. And it's a kind of motion of flattening and twisting, flattening and twisting. And it really helps to have two pliers to do this because you kind of want it as tight as possible. If you cut the ends too short, it does make it a lot harder. So remember that if you need to, you can always trim off any excess. I hope you're finding this video useful. If you are, then please do like it and feel free to share it with other creatives who might find it useful as well. And you're always welcome to become one of my subscribers here on YouTube and also now on Patreon where I'm sharing more art tutorials to help you. So I'm looking forward to seeing you over there and I have links to my Patreon page below this video. But, you know, just search for Kim Dello to find me as well. Right. When you have got your shapes, place them on the plastic folder. And I've put mine on a board so that I can easily move it out of the way. And you'll see why in a minute. 
How you add the paint is entirely up to you. I'm adding my paint directly into the shape, then smoothing it out with the palette knife. But you could squeeze the paint out onto another surface and then add it in with a palette knife from there. Experiment, try different ways and see how you, you know, see which ones you prefer. Doing it this way means that I will probably have some very large areas of just one colour on the other side of the star. So the top side, I mean, you can see it, it looks like it's mixing, but on the bottom, it's going to be a lot more blocky. And you'll see at the end what I mean. Now you can, whilst you're doing this, lift up the whole sheet very carefully and peek underneath if you want to check how it's looking. But if you do do that, make sure you keep the sheet level at all times. You don't want to tip it or turn it over as the wire's just going to drop off. So make sure that the paint filling the inside of the star reaches the wire frame and contacts it fully. Don't worry if the paint goes over the frame and you find yourself colouring outside of the lines. It's fine. It's not a problem. And you might also get air bubbles as well. And again, you know, it's not that big a deal. And some of the air bubbles might become texture or they actually might become little holes in the finished piece. But it will just add an interesting look. And if you don't like them, you could always pop them with a pin and fill in any gaps with more paint. So as I said, you know, just play around with it. Try different looks and ways to add the paint. So I'm going to do just that with the smaller star and see if I can get some interesting patterns if I use a bit of that leftover wire to draw in the paint. So we can all see how that looks when that's finished. You won't be able to see anything until I turn it over and I won't be turning it over until it's dry, so you'll just have to wait. Once you've done, you're going to need to place it somewhere out of the way where it won't be disturbed, but it has enough air circulation to let it dry. And that's why I've got it on the board, so I can easily move it around so it's not in my way. And it could take a long time to dry, depending on what kind of paint you've used, how thick it is, the temperature and humidity of the room that you're in. So you may even have to leave it for, you know, a good 24 hours, just to be sure, possibly even longer. But here is how to check if it's dry or not. So this is around 12 to 14 hours after I added that paint in the first place, and some of it is dry. But if you see, I'm gently trying to lift it off the plastic and I'm, I'm not really applying a lot of pressure and it's just not coming free easily. And you can even see that the areas where there's lots of paint is kind of bending as I'm trying to lift it away from that sheet. But you can at this point have a quick peek at the other side to see what it looks like because now you can turn it over and it won't drop off. Oh, and that texture from that wire, the, where I was smushing the wire around on that smaller star, it looks pretty fun. I'll, I'll have to play with that some more on my next one. Okay, it's now a lot later. I probably could have peeled off the stars around 24 hours after I'd applied the paint, but in fact, this is several days later as I was working on other projects and didn't get back to this one for a while. And this time you can see that the stars just kind of pop off the plastic nice and easily. And once your star is free, you can use the craft knife to carefully cut off the excess paint all around the outside of the shape. But do be careful of your fingers, won't you? So as you saw, it's pretty fun and easy to make your own acrylic paint skins and make them into wired shapes. Come back on Sunday for an idea on how to use it. And my patrons, you guys, you'll be getting a little sneak peek before then. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you get a chance to do something creative today. See you next time.